Welcome back to another mold making video from BJV. We decided to do something simple and fun, just in time at the making of this video for Halloween. Using a 3D printed zombie head, we'll make some really cool simulated metal candle holders. Because we made our print at low resolution, and we planned on hand working the cast pieces out of the mold, we'll use our modeling clay to smooth out any rough edges on the print to prevent the silicone from mechanically locking onto those areas when poured. We'll go ahead and mark where to mount the skull to the baseboard and attach with a thin bead of super glue. Having the marks on the board allows us to quickly place the skull in a precise manner. For the mold box, we found some conveniently sized rings of clear acrylic and hot glue in place to ensure a leak proof enclosure. It's time to prepare our castable two-part silicone for the mold. We're using our user-friendly TC5024 tin-based silicone. Once the A and B components are measured out, we can begin to mix. Because the B-side catalyst is pigmented blue, it's easy to see if you're achieving a thorough mix. Using the double cup mix method mentioned in our other mold making videos, we're less likely to end up with streaks of unmixed material, potentially ruining our mold and wasting material. Once mixed, we'll place our container in our vacuum chamber to extract out the trapped air bubbles. TC5024 is fairly low in viscosity and could potentially just be mixed and poured, but your mold would likely have air bubbles and potentially cause imperfections in the mold surface and decreased tear strength in the cured rubber. Note that our pump is capable of pulling 28 to 29 inches of mercury and is a minimum of 5 to 6 CFM. After several minutes under vacuum, we release the valve and begin to pour the silicone. Note that we pour away from the surface of the pattern and allow the silicone to flow around the part, moving air out of the way as the silicone flows. We tilt the pattern to allow silicone to flow into the undercuts without trapping air pockets. After the silicone is cured, we can begin demolding the pattern. As mentioned in our other mold making videos, isopropyl alcohol works great to loosen up the hot glue holding the acrylic pieces in place. Once the hot glue is peeled off and acrylic rings removed, it's time to remove our 3D printed skull from the silicone. The beauty of castable silicone is that it doesn't stick to plastic, which is why we didn't bother with the mold release in this step. Once the silicone is flexed around the part a few times to break the seal, we can carefully pull the skull out of the silicone mold. Voila! We have an extremely detailed silicone mold that can make some really cool parts. Before we cast anything in, we need to do a quick washing to remove any modeling clay that may have stuck to the silicone. A little dish soap and some warm water is all that's needed. Don't use harsh solvents or scrub the surface too hard, or you'll ruin the mold before you've even started. Dry the mold of any moisture when finished. We'll apply a mold release prior to casting our polyurethane into the mold. This will help extend the life of the mold and aid in part removal. We manually apply some mold release to the undercuts and any hard to spray areas in addition to a fine, even mist coating of release onto the exposed surfaces. Note that we're spraying outdoors to prevent contaminating our casting area with release. For the cast parts, we're going to use a unique material used for a variety of applications. TC814 is an aluminum filled, fast casting polyurethane that exhibits low shrink, low exotherm, and quick demolds. It has the weight, look, and feel of metal that you don't get from traditional casting materials. It's a great material for special effects to simulate metal parts, vacuum forming tools, rigid molds, wax injection tools, and much more. TC814 has an easy one-to-one -one mix ratio, and once the A and B components are measured out, we can begin to mix thoroughly with our mixing spatula. Once again, to ensure a proper mix, we use the double cup mix method to prevent any unmixed material from ending up in our cured part. To minimize air bubble entrapment, we pull a vacuum on the mixed polyurethane to extract air bubbles. A small amount of polyurethane is poured into the mold and rolled into the ears and undercuts to help prevent large air pockets. Then, the mold is filled to the top and allowed to cure. After a few hours, we can demold the part from the mold. The sidewalls are flexed and the skull is carefully pulled out, trying to avoid any unnecessary stress on the mold. You'll notice the cured part appears as a dull gray after demolding, but something amazing happens when you begin to sand and burnish the surface it begins to look more like a metal surface and can create some really great effects. You can burnish the surface with a hard metal rod or spoon 
to bring out even more shine. To achieve even more depth and contrast, we can apply paints or stains to the part before we work the surface. Some black and green paint should give our zombie a ghoulish look. Now watch as we take this part to the next level. Using sandpaper, steel wool, and burnishing tools will produce a very nice effect to the cast part. Because the TC814 machines so well, we'll simply drill a recessed pocket in the zombie's head for our tea light candle. And there we have it. Our zombies are ready to decorate the porch to greet trick-or-treaters and have everyone ask where you got your amazing metal candle holders. Happy Halloween! <laughs>